Good morning and um, welcome to my, my second vlog. The first one was pretty well received, so we thought we'd give it a whirl again. Um, just walking down towards the rectory, we've got the uh, Birchfields Park there behind me and the new junior school building, and we're, we're going to see what's going on at this end of the school today. Just pop down to where the, um, the rectory gate is. Um, oh, there's a school bell in the background just to prove that I'm actually on site. Um, we've got St James's Church there behind me, um, built in 1846. There was actually an old chapel um, built in the 16th century on this site beforehand that was part of the Birch Hall estate which owned this land. Um, the rectory itself, which is in this direction, was a, an addition in 1854. Um, the first rector was a, a Mr Anson, and you may know that Anson Road is named after him. Um, some of you will remember back in the day that there used to be the old scout huts and venture scout troops used to meet down here. Now those old scout huts have gone. Um, I remember playing table tennis in there back in the 80s and 90s. They've now gone and these are actually the, um, the spaces used by our ground staff and estate staff. So that's where we keep all our lawn mowers and tractors etc. A little bit of staff parking too. The school acquired the rectory in the 1920s when we actually acquired this land for the, the modern school site. Um, up until, well, I think it was about 1955, it was used as changing rooms for sports. Obviously in 55 we built the, um, the school cricket pavilion with the new changing rooms. Um, and since 55 it has been always the sixth form biology department. So we're going to go and see what's going on inside today. I'm just going to walk into R3, which is one of our biology labs. Where, oh, Dr. Yeah. Crawshaw's in full flow. What are we up to, Dr. Crawshaw? Give Hello. Us a, what are we doing? Uh, we are measuring uh, the effect of temperature on uh, the permeability of beetroot membranes. So there's lots of boys uh, with little bits of beetroot uh, in various hot water baths, slowly leaking pigment uh, into uh, the water and then we're going to measure the amount of pigment that has been released using a spectrophotometer at different wavelengths of light and then we're going to see what we can learn. Fantastic. Dr. Crawshaw is basically the, the Stevie D of the modern era. He's, he's head of middle school, but he's, he's not quite as scary as Stevie D. I am, I am scary. <laughs> quite a lot of MGS boys claim that they've never ever been upstairs in the rectory. Um, I only came up here a few times, um, I think once for a Christian Union meeting before I realised that Jewish Assembly was more fun. Now I've gone right up to the top floor of the rectory. Um, quite a narrow staircase up here. Um, this is where Dr. Birch used to have his office back in the day. I think he just came up here for a sleep. Oh, Mr. Mr. Blair's in there, head of biology. Is he going to give us a wave? He's working hard. That's ridiculous. Birch has still got his name on the door and he's not been here for 12 months. Crazy. I just walked into what was once Dr. Birch's office and I found an old man cune and it's Robert Neal. Robert Neil, what are you doing at Manchester Grammar now? Um, well, I'm, I'm basically making Mandarin Chinese massive around the city. So um, we're doing a lot of outreach work and making Mandarin a mainstream subject at certain um, secondary schools and primary schools and also working with a PGCE um, course at Manchester Metropolitan University. Very good. And how's your Mandarin? Uh, Tim Harbour. Oh, very good. In Guy Charbour's Great. See you later, mate. See ya. I'm just going to go into the, um, the Marx building now. The Marx building is still being used um, to teach physics. Um, we're trying to keep most of sixth form sciences still in the, in the lab, so um, they can still do all the practical work you'd expect. So we're going to see what's going on inside. We've had to create more space, um, given it's the, the pandemic, and we've got to try and spread people apart. So we've actually created a, a new room here, room 9 and 3 quarters, or 9.75 as it is in the timetable. So. We'll go and see what's going on in here. Come on in. Oh. Hello. It's Mr. Coffee. We're in a, a, an enrichment class of philosophy here. And uh, do you guys want to tell us what we're talking about? Negative, negative capability and John Keats. So oh, God, I thought idea. you were reviewing the staff. <laughs> <laughs> right. the idea that um, if you are comfortable with uncertainties, then you can innovate. And we've been looking at Elon Musk, who's telling people that if you're going to generate a new business, you've got to be vulnerable to the point that you go back to first principles. Right. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll leave you there and carry okay. on, Guy. Good yeah. to see you. Now, if you're lucky enough, you may even get to be taught by, um, by a master. So I think he's teaching here at the moment. So we'll, we'll just wander into it. That's P11. Oh, he's... 
he's there working away. I think his class are currently doing a test, but even the High Master's got a teaching timetable at the moment. How many periods are you doing? Two sixth-form classes. Two sixth-form classes. Tremendous. We're going to have a look in the, um, what I know is the, the sixth-form block. It's now called the, um, the Mason Building. Um, built obviously following a fundraising appeal in the, uh, in the early 1960s. So we're going to go and see what's going on there. It's actually gone back to um, a sixth form bubble um, teaching space at the moment. So um, it's back how it used to be. The last 10 years it's been solely used really for modern languages and, um, and Mr Kelly and politics really. Mr Kelly just refused to move out so politics is still in there. You may recall that when they um, opened the Mason Building or the Sixth Form Block, there was an annex through to the library. So, if we go into that library today, you'll actually see that it's uh, still being used as a, as a study space. Some of our Sixth Formers are in there now on a free period, um, using their time wisely. Those booths that used to exist here, they've now they've now gone. I remember on a few occasions you could successfully come and hide in here if you hadn't done your work, and as long as you picked your legs up, the teachers couldn't look underneath and see you. So, good place to catch up your work. Little plaque here to uh, commemorate Rod Martin, Rod, brilliant teacher who's our first head of politics. This was his, his teaching room. Just found Mr. Wheeler, Mr. Wheeler, head of geography, and he actually appointed me um, to the school back in 2004, and he was also my geography teacher when I was in sixth form. So we'll go and see what he's doing. Walking in. and they finally come up with the first actual plotting. For the future. What we're doing, Mr. Wheeler? We're, we're doing misery, pestilence, famine, death. Malthus? Yeah, we are. We're doing my favourite, Thomas Malthus. Very good. But their favourite as well. I thought they liked Paul yeah. Ehrlich. Oh, well, don't, 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 yeah, that, oh, yeah, we've got that spoiler far. Spoiler alert. Yeah, okay, okay, we'll be doing Paul Ehrlich, though. Good. <laughs> Red Tom's there. Yeah. Yeah. Six form geographers, the absolute cream of the crop. Yeah. Tremendous. Off yes. we go. You can see in the background there that we still have one to one lessons with our language assistant. So this young man behind me is just a Brushing upon his Mandarin, I've actually found Mr. Kelly. Um, he's teaching in here. God knows how he's still here. He seems to be here for a long, long time. Hello, Mr. Kelly. Mr. Jones, well, you've come to the middle of a lesson on socialism. Really? Uh, about to explain, in fact, that socialism is uh, a historically redundant ideology on account of its central precept involving a massive extension of state power, massive extension of public spending and state regulation, massive increases in public spending and borrowing, none of which have any relevance, of course, to contemporary uh, political... And, and an, I notice that you're still teaching without any notes whatsoever. Uh, I did have some notes 32 years ago, but I left them on the bus and I've just been winging it ever since. Well, really. all the best. See you soon. Good to see you again, Mr. Jones. Take care. Because of the pandemic, we've had to um, create a little bit more space for our six formers to enjoy their lunch. So um, they've got their own wedding venue behind the pavilion. So let's go and take a look. Here we go. We've got Susan and Jeanette providing chicken curry for the boys today. Pop it on. Fruit. Millionaire shortbread. Fantastic. Very civilised then. I'm sure you'd agree. I hope you've enjoyed that little tour of, um, of our sort of sixth form teaching and seeing how the sixth form are coping um, during the pandemic. Um, I'll bring it to an end for today. I just want to mention that you may have seen this week that schools across the country have been celebrating what they've called the UK Schools Week of Giving. We've had institutions celebrating the sort of philanthropy and support of their alumni um, up and down the country. I think we all know that. I think the Old Man community has been unbelievable in their support for this school. Um, from me, thank you very much. It's not just the major donors here, you've seen the boards behind me, um, the fact that over 3,000 old Manx uh, regularly support the school um, since we launched the appeal in 1998 is something we should be very proud of. Thank you to all of you who've offered career support, come and done lectures and talks for us, mentored six formers, mentored young old Manx. It really is um, massively appreciated. So um, I'll say goodbye for now and I will see you again at Christmas. All the best.